Could there be more than one way to solve a liquid volume problem? In this lesson, you will learn how to represent liquid volume measurement quantities by creating diagrams that feature a measurement scale. Let's review. We use different tools and diagrams for different purposes when solving math problems. We will find some of these useful as we solve our word problems throughout this set of lessons. We have number lines, tables, bar diagrams, and tape diagrams. Many of these tools should look familiar. Okay, let's take a look at a real world problem. Mrs. Spies poured 21 fluid ounces of water into a container. The container was then 3 fourths full. What was the capacity of the container? Okay, let's zone in on the important information. We know that when she poured the 21 fluid ounces of water into the container, it wasn't completely full. It was only 3 fourths of the way full. So the question wants us to figure out what was the capacity of the container? What's the capacity means how much it can hold when it's completely full. Okay, so I think I'm gonna draw a diagram to help me better visualize and solve this problem. I'm gonna pretend this was done in maybe a science class and therefore I'm going to draw a beaker as my container. Most beakers have some sort of scale drawn on the side, so I'm gonna do that as well. At the bottom of my scale, I'm going to put a zero and at the top, I'm going to put the question mark because that's what I'm trying to figure out, the capacity. I'm going to make my scale into fourths since when she poured in the 21 ounces, it was only three fourths of the way full. Remember, the denominator tells me how many equal pieces total I have. So I know the first three boxes must total 21 fluid ounces thanks to my problem. In order to figure out how much the entire container can hold, I first have to figure out how much each mark is worth on my scale. So before I go on, I want to clear up a common misunderstanding. Some students might think it doesn't matter what numbers are written next to each mark on my scale. Therefore, they think there could be a lot of answers because they can just figure out any numbers that add up to 21. So they might think, that 0 plus 5 gets me to 5, and 5 plus 12 gets me to 17, and then 17 plus 4, oh, I got to 21, so that should work. If a student did this, this would be very wrong. Because fractions are a part of a whole, and are therefore equal pieces of that whole, we must skip count by the same number each time we move up our scale. So going back to our drawing, I need to think about what number, if I add it to itself three times, will equal 21 fluid ounces. Or I can even think of it as 21 divided by the three equal sections equals seven. So now I know that each fourth on my scale is equal to seven fluid ounces. So let's check it and make sure it works. Zero plus seven gets me to seven. 7 plus 7 takes me to 14, and we can check it by adding one more group of 7, and yes, it works because it goes to 21 fluid ounces, and we know that's how much was filled at 3 fourths of the way. Since I know each fourth is 7 ounces, I can take the original 21, add the last fourth to it, which is another group of 7 fluid ounces, and get a total capacity of 28 fluid ounces. So the capacity of the beaker is 28 fluid ounces. Now, this was just one type of diagram we could use to solve this problem. Let's look at one other type. We could have used a number line. Same problem, different diagram. I'm going to draw a number line that starts at zero and ends at question mark again. And then I'm going to divide that number line into four sections since remember the denominator tells me the total number of sections. I know that 3 fourths of the container equals 21 fluid ounces. So the blue rectangle represents what's been filled so far. Now again, I can see that the 21 ounces have been divided into three equal groups. 
so I have to figure out how much each sex section is worth. Only this time, let's pretend I didn't know my division facts. I could also guess and check to determine which number goes into each box. Hmm, let's try five. Five plus five plus five equals, oh, it's only 15, it's not enough. I needed something a little bit bigger. Let's try seven. Seven plus seven plus seven equals 21. Yes, it works. So each tick mark on my number line is going to be worth seven fluid ounces. Now let's mark each line, each mark on our number line as adding seven every time. Zero plus seven equals seven. Adding another group of seven gets me to 14. And again, we can check our work by adding seven to 14 which gets us to 21 fluid ounces. So all I have to do now to find the total capacity of the container is add one more group of seven to the 21 ounces she originally poured in. And 21 plus seven gets me to 28 fluid ounces. So again, we figured out the container can hold 28 fluid ounces at capacity. In this lesson, you have learned how to represent liquid volume measurement quantities by creating diagrams that feature a measurement scale.